Well, g'day curd nerds. Today, we're going to be making Cheshire. Well, Cheshire is a cheese made similarly to cheddar. However, it's one of the oldest cheeses. In fact, it's the oldest known cheese uh, in England. It was mentioned way back in 1125, if I remember rightly, in uh, some abbot's books in a priory. This cheese is normally consumed within about eight weeks to six months. Uh, you don't eat it before a month. Uh, it just hasn't developed its flavor correctly. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna age it for the full six months. It's known as a crumbly cheese. So that should be very interesting. Anyway, let me show you how I made Cheshire. So I'm using milk sourced from Inglenook Dairy. Thanks to Troy for providing the milk. And the ingredients are 10 liters or 10 quarts of whole milk. Oh, it's about 3.6% fat was the one I was given. A one quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture one half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, five eighths of a teaspoon or three milliliters of liquid rennet. I was using single strength IMCU 200 and that's diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. Now for salting, we'll need two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. Now that can be kosher salt, it can be sea salt, uh, is lo as, as long as it doesn't have iodine in it. So once we poured all the milk in, we're going to bring it up to temperature. Now sometimes that takes as much as 30 minutes. So about 30 minutes later, the target temperature for this cheese is 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just using my thermopen there and when it gets to 30, well, I think it was 29.9 but close enough, just take out your equipment. Now because I'm using homogenized milk here, I made a mistake and you'll see that later on in the video, I decided to add the calcium chloride up front so I've brought it up to temperature. I'm adding the calcium chloride solution now instead of later on after the milk has ripened. Now I'm hoping this helps with curd set, but we'll see. It's a bit of a surprise. So give that a good stir through your milk. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed in. Now I'm just slowing it down so it doesn't move around anymore. And this is on purpose because we're going to add the next ingredient. So we're going to add in the mesophilic starter culture. Now that was a quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture. Now each of these little sachets I'm using is only an eighth of a teaspoon. So I had to use two sachets to get the right quantity. cutting the lid off the second sachet and we'll sprinkle that over the surface of the milk as well. Now we're going to cover and allow the starter culture to rehydrate for five minutes. Now the heat is off by the way. So 30 minutes later Sorry, five minutes later, not 30 minutes. <laughs> but give the uh, starter culture, which is now hydrated, uh, a back into the milk. So give it a good stir so it's incorporated all the way through the milk so it can do its thing and the uh, lactic uh, bacteria can convert the lactose in the milk into lactic acid. also known as ripening the milk. 
So we're going to cover and we're going to allow the milk to ripen for 40 minutes at 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So pop the lid on and set your timer. Okay, 40 minutes later the milk has acidified slightly and now we're going to add the next ingredient. Just give that a little bit of a stir. Whoops, before I do that, what I should do is check the temperature. So you can see that the temperature has crept up slightly by 1.2 degrees Celsius, which is not a heck of a lot, but that's okay. Now during the, uh, the coagulation period, it'll probably come down in temperature by about that much anyway. So now we're gonna add the rennet to the milk. Make sure that the milk is being stirred when you add the rennet in there. It helps distribute it through. Now stir for no longer than one minute. This sped up footage is actually about 40 seconds of stirring. So we're going to cover that and we're going to allow the milk to set for 45 minutes at the target temperature of 30 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. So check for a clean break after that period of time. But if it, you don't get a, quick, a clear break, that looked quite sloppy actually, so we'll uh, let that uh, set for another 10 minutes. I'm having some trouble with the curd set during this cheese, so I had to wait an extra 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so this sort of thing happens in cheese making. The unfortunate thing, and I don't know if you can see it there, I'm actually using Inglenook Dairy's milk, which is really good milk. However, I didn't specify when I asked for the milk that it be unhomogenized. So this is homogenized milk. It has difficulty setting a curd. So it's my own silly fault for not asking for the right milk correctly. But uh, yeah, I think we'll get a cheese out of it and I think it'll be Cheshire. So I had to wait for a fair bit more time because of the homogenized milk. So I did another test and it looks okay, it's not sloppy, it's a lot firmer. You can feel that when you plunge the knife in there to do the clean break test. So now that being good, we're going to cut the curds into half centimetre or quarter inch cubes. So I just did the uh, horizontals, I'm doing the verticals with my sanitised curd knife. Now it's a fairly small cut, you've got to be quite accurate. So I'm just doing the vertical cuts one way. And then I'm going to do it perpendicular to that. Now I can actually feel under the, under the knife that it's not the strongest curd set that I've ever had. And as I mentioned before in the little uh, uh, jump in there, that uh, it's homogenized milk. So I usually don't use homogenized milk. I used non-homogenized or cream line milk is what you're after for cheese making. Uh, it's one of the best products you can get as long as it's not ultra pasteurized. Okay, now because the cubes were not small enough, I just uh, chose to stab my sanitized balloon whisk just in a firm up and down motion into the curds and then pull it out again. I'm not whisking or anything like that, just moving it up and down to cut the curds smaller. There we go. So we're going to cover that now and allow the curds to heal so that they're not uh, going to fracture when you stir them. So we're going to allow them to heal for five minutes. I 
Okay, five minutes later, we're going to gently lift and move the curds to ensure that they're all cut. And if there are some large pieces, just cut them with a spoon, just like I did there. Now, we're going to stir for five minutes and we're going to rest for five minutes. So after the resting period, we're going to dip off one litre or one quart of whey. Now, I thought I could do it with just the measuring cup, but I had to break out my trusty sieve, as always, and measure out one litre. There we go. It doesn't go down very far, but I did get about a litre there. Maybe a little bit more, but it's not very much. I was only using a quarter cup measure. Okay, so now we're going to stir the curds and we stir them for quite a long time. You know, be gentle when you're stirring at first because you don't want the curds to fracture. And what they do, they just turn into mush if that, uh, if fracturing happens. Okay, so we're going to gently stir those curds for about an hour. And we're going to heat them up to 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. So that's only one degree Celsius higher than what the original target temperature was. So my milk, or my curds and whey have cooled down to 29.5.6, uh, which is actually just under the target temperature. So you just, I just put it on the lowest heat there was possible, and over the hour, just I checked every 15 minutes to make sure it wasn't creeping up. And by about the 50 minute mark of stirring, I found that it was at 31 degrees Celsius. So that was cool. The time has gone off there. You can see that the curds are fairly small. They're actually about, uh, they're plump rice grain size. So fairly small, something you would uh, normally see when you make, say, Parmesan or, a, or an Alpine cheese. Anyway, I'm doing the squeeze test there to see if the curds will knit together give them a good squeeze and they are they are knitting together so i think they're stirred enough i wouldn't stir any longer than an hour that's for sure okay and they break apart when you press your thumb into them and trying not to get curds all over my hands anyway just briefly got to wash my hands there for a second Now this is a very important step. Just make sure that we cover and allow the curds to settle for 40 minutes because the curd size is so small. This assists when we drain the curds. Okay, so over to the sink area and we're gonna drain our curds through a cheesecloth lined colander. Now I'm using loose weave cheesecloth. You don't really need tight weave. It won't go through the uh, through the mesh. Just make sure you get it all out there. Okay, now I found it wasn't draining very well. I wanted to drain fairly quickly, as it should do. So I'm just gonna uh, shape that up, grab the four corners, just lift it up. Now the way is, wet, is running fairly clear, so uh, we're not losing any fat when we do this. I'm just gently holding the bag of curds there moving them around so that the excess whey comes off. Now this is important because we're going to transfer the whey back into the pot in a second to make a big curd slab. So I'm just pressing that down there to get any excess whey I possibly can and then just popping in the pot and then just pull one side of the cheesecloth and then it just rolls out into a big ball. Anyway, so we're just going to push that down in the pot and we're going to keep it warm now what I've done in that little sink is put hot water from the tap so it just touches the bottom of the pot at that angle so a nice little trick there to keep the curds warm during the cheddaring process which is what we're moving into now now I'm just cleaning off my cheesecloth because I'm going to reuse that that's 
really hot water. It's about 70 degrees Celsius coming out the tap. So uh, that'll keep it nice and clean. So every so often just push down to create a big cake of curd and drain off where necessary. Now I'm only, I only did this for about five minutes. I found it was a little bit mushy, but um, by being persistent and shaping it, it did form a slab eventually. Now we're going to cover and allow that to stand, um, keeping warm using the hot water underneath the pot for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes later, drain off any of the excess whey. I'm going to grab the curd knife and we're going to cut the slab into four large chunks, which I just did there. And I'm just going to move them around a little bit so that they're not touching each other. And you can actually see the cut lines. There we go. So we're going to allow that to rest for another 30 minutes. Make sure you pop the lid on, keep all the beasties out. And you can see the water there that I just showed you. So that's warm water out of the tap. Okay, so 30 minutes later, you can see the, the that the whey is running fairly clear now which is a good sign that everything's going okay. So we just drain and then we turn the curd over and we're then going to cover and rest for another 30 minutes. So I'm just turning each slab there. There we go. Okay, so 30 minutes later, we'll do exactly the same process again. You can see there's more whey formed there down the bottom. So we're going to drain off the whey. And then we're going to turn over the cut curd again. Now it's essential that the curd stays warm during this period um, because it won't knit together properly and it won't uh, expel as much whey as as necessary for making this cheese a crumbly cheese. Okay, so I think we're done with the final uh, turning of the curds there. So we're just going to drain off the whey. That'll do. I'm just rinsing out my cheesecloth. I didn't keep any of the little bits that, uh, that I tipped into that uh, colander during the chattering process because they were cold and they won't knit into the cheese if you use them it looks quite quite terrible actually in the if you press them into the warm curds okay so I'm using a chopping board this is a clean chopping board and I'm going to um, move a, a chunk at a time onto the chopping board And we're going to use the curd knife just to cut the curd into two centimetre or three quarters of an inch uh, sized cubes. Or as close as possible there. So don't get too uh, obsessed with the size of the cubes. I'm just using my thumbnail as two centimetres, so I'm trying to figure it out from there. Okay, so once they're cut, then we pop them back into the pot. There's no need to use a different pot or anything like that. So just finish off that. I'm being a bit finicky there, but there we go. Now they're all cut. So that was just one slab. So pop them in back into the pot. So how about we speed this sucker up? Rightio. So as I said, two centimetre cubes for all of the slabs. Pop them all back into the pot. Shouldn't take too long. Takes about five minutes to do this part of the process. Now by doing this, you actually ensure that the final cheese is crumbly and has the desired texture for a Cheshire cheese. There we 
go. All done. Quick wash of the hands. Now we're going to uh, grab our salt and we're going to add our two tablespoons of salt and we're going to gently mill those through the curds now. Oh, that was a brief appearance by Teddy there. So just toss your salt through the curds just gently there. Don't over toss it. Don't need to. If you start seeing cloudy way, you've gone too far. So line your uh, mould with a uh, cheesecloth and we're going to fill it with the curds. Just a handful at a time is uh, sufficient. Don't get too excited, don't pour the whole lot in, it usually goes everywhere. Just a handful at a time, nice and simple. Okay, just get rid of the pot. And now we're going to press the cheese. So you can see there that I'm actually pulling the cheesecloth down a little bit to make sure that there are no wrinkles in the side of the cheese. So then I just fold over the cheesecloth, put the follower on top, uh, put it into the press, and we're going to press it 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for 30 minutes initially. We're trying to get the cheese to close up all those cubes to all stick together. So 30 minutes later, we're going to take it out of the press. Now I've just slowed this part of the footage down uh, because you can see there that it's not completely closed up. Uh, this is only the initial pressing, so what you need to do, be very gentle in case it all falls apart. <laughs> Hopefully it won't. But be gentle, turn it over, and then redress it with the cheesecloth. And we're going to press it at max pressure, 50 pounds or 22 kilograms for at least 12 hours. I chose overnight so that I had it in the press at about 6 p.m., and uh, left it overnight uh, and took it out of the press the next day at about 7 a.m. So that's about 13 hours. So between 12 and 13, it'll be fine. Now, what you have to do is you have to check the cheese to make sure that it is um, fully closed up. So you've got a fully closed up brine. If not, you may need to press it for a few more hours. Now, as you'll see in a second, the cheese was fine, it was fully pressed, all closed up. Now I did need to trim a little bit with a knife, uh, just a little bit of a uh, burr there, so just cut that off, it's the best time to do it. And now we're going to air dry that for two days until it's touch dry. So this is after the two days, you can see there it looks a little bit mottled, that's just where the different cubes had closed up. So. There's no issue there, there's no open texture or anything. There is a solid rind all the way through, which is perfect, it's what you're trying to get to. And it is touch dry, it feels a bit like a, a clammy handshake. Uh, that's when you know it's ready to either wax or vacuum pack. So there's my Cheshire and it's all its glory before we put it away for maturation. Now I'm opting to vacuum pack, so there's my trusty vacuum pack machine. I'm using a Sunbeam Food Saver is the brand of the vacuum packer in case anybody wants to know. So we're going to seal that up and we're going to ripen it at 13 to 16 Celsius or 54 to 60 Fahrenheit for two to six months. You can age it up to a year. Now turn weekly for even ripening. Now I'm going to ripen mine for six months. So that'll be ready in July 2018. There it is all sealed. I'll pop that in my cheese cave. Now that wasn't too hard, was it? I think it's a fairly simple cheese to make. Uh, the process I made it with in one day. So I think I started at about 11 o'clock and finished at about six o'clock. So about seven hours of uh, from putting the milk into the vat and heating it up and finally having it in the press. 
Now there are three types of Cheshire. So there's red Cheshire, which you can add an Arto to. There's white Cheshire, which is this variety here. And there's also a blue Cheshire, uh, which is very similar to Stilton, but a lot crumblier. Uh, there's not a lot of added fat to this. I used normal plain milk uh, that had a fat content of 3.6%. Uh, so that's kind of the range that you're looking for uh, when it comes to milk. Anyway, it was a simple cheese to make. I had great fun making it and hope you do too. Now don't forget to check out some other videos that we have here uh, on how to make other types of cheeses. Now if you want to support the show, pop over to Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Also, if you want to make this type of cheese, check out our hard cheese kit over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.